All right, we're here in Niagara Falls with um, actor, producer, singer, the incomparable Robert Davi. Robert, welcome back to Niagara Falls. It's great to see you again. Thank you. Yeah, it's awesome. He's on the road to romance tour. Davi sings Sinatra. What does it all entail? Well, I'm here doing the uh, Falls View. I've been touring around the world. I've been in Latvia, Sweden, Budapest, Australia, Italy, China, Moscow. I've been all over the place, all across the states, and I'm, you know, promoting my, my record. And now here I am at the uh, beautiful Niagara Falls Falls View Casino, which is quite stunning. Uh, you know, it's interesting to me because uh, my parents. I remember them telling me. I remember seeing pictures. You know, those old Kodak booklets they used to have with the ruffled edges around the pictures. When they used to take, they didn't have digital. You had to develop your stuff and you got them in a little booklet like that. Uh, I remember looking at my parents' pictures and seeing the Niagara Falls, but never being here till I came in June. And now I have this wonderful view outside the window here and, and being able to perform uh, music called On the Road to Romance, which is, uh, you know, this has been a honeymoon destination for many, many years. So it's kind of, uh, you know, a very interesting uh, journey. And great band we have rehearsing today. I'm a little tired. Is this your first time performing here in Niagara Falls? First time. Yeah, yeah. I've not been, been here before. Have not performed except in Toronto. I got a star on the Italian Walk of Fame. Yes, I remember. You know, and I got that. So I was. I did a couple of little things at a at a gala for the. You know, but that was very with just the local players and stuff. This is now with you know 36 piece band, tremendous string section, and of course my rhythm section, and great vibe performance, a pianist, a drummer, a bass player from Los Angeles, That's uh, top players, uh, rhythm section. So it's, uh, yeah, first time playing in, in, in Canada. In Canada? And I hope to come back many more times. Uh, you coming you know, to the show? Absolutely. We're here Thursday night. Oh, yeah. Wonderful. Oh, yeah. Number six. Uh, oh, good, yeah, good. and uh, I'm going to be like this. Hi, Robert. <laughs> hey. That's great. I That's won't do that. I, I know that the show's classy. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, you're talking Frank Sinatra. I mean, listen, I've seen you on the internet and your movements, everything, you know. Wow. Wow. See, there are guys that do impersonations or mm -hmm. imitations or they mimic or they. they they even put facial things on to look like Sinatra. And they use the same charts he used. I don't. They use all the original charts except for maybe a couple that were given to me by Quincy Jones, who's a very uh, uh, strong supporter of mine. But the whole great quality about Sinatra, and uh, this is his 100th anniversary this year, and what I'm doing in terms of tributing him, or paying homage to him uh, more than tributing, is uh, an homage to Sinatra because of his, uh, I did my first film with him in 1977, Contract on Cherry Street, and uh, he was a friend of mine over the years, and also the meaning and the significance of, of this music is so important, the great American songbook, which translates all over the world as I've been able to attest to that myself, now that I put my hand in the way. So I don't mimic him. I, you know, uh, there is a, uh, he was a terrific actor. So it's in through the interpretations and through his, his Picasso's contribution to music that he had, you know, which, uh, and his vocal quality that he had, the bel canto technique, which is what I've studied as a kid and as an adult. Right, and that's what I was going to ask you. Uh, when you were in, uh, in school, um, what was, uh, what, did you ever think that you were ever going to go into music? I mean, you're obviously an actor, but was it ever something, I mean, I know the story of the football in the locker room and someone said, you know, that's... But no, that's a true story. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a... Go um, down to the glee club and yeah, yeah. You, and you didn't want to go. And <laughs> right, right. My, my mom said, what do you have to lose? And I tried and there were all the pretty girls, you know, four guys and... 20 girls in the club, and that was it, you know. And, but I had a, I had a very good voice, and um, the um, I won first place 
New York State School Music Association solo competition as a kid, you know, as a teenager in, in school, and had wanted to uh, get involved with music in depth. Uh, but I was a baritone with the heart of a tenor, as I'm sure you know. Yes, yeah, that I, you, you, I've heard And the that. baritones in opera, and I love the opera, play all the, the, play all the villains, you know what I mean? It's much like in the films that I've done, you know? But I was really romantic at heart. And the Great American Song lets me, as a baritone, uh, lets me uh, perform uh, in that, uh, uh, you know, more of the romantic style. So, uh, I have to ask you, I mean, like, man, your, your, your voice is incredible. Uh, I did a, we did a, a thing today on the internet. We listened to Frank and we listened to you and, and uh, on YouTube and we were just listening to both and we were like, wow, look at this. Like I said, like you said, you don't mimic uh, Frank Sinatra right. at all, but very similar, very style. It's just... Well, the style, and here's how I, how I explain that to people, because, again, there are guys that try to mimic recordings of Sinatra, so they have no idea of the process, meaning, Sinatra studied opera with a guy named John Quinlan from the Metropolitan Opera when he was a young man. He, and then he continued to take lessons from great singers like Robert Merrill. Now, myself as a young boy studied opera with Dan Farrow from Juilliard, Samuel Margulies, who taught Robert Merrill, who gave Sinatra workshops right. later on in life. Uh, uh, so, and then, and then Tito Gobi, who was the greatest singing baritone in the opera world, I worked with him, and uh, most recently, uh, the, who, the only guy that I think has a, uh, has a tremendous uh, vocal builder, Gary Katona, okay. out of Los Angeles. So, explaining that, the idea of the Sinatra being the first popular singer that used bel canto technique in popular music, that's a style of Italian singing, that gave him a vocal depth that other, others didn't have, you see, and others don't have. They can mimic a certain part of that, but not really know where, how that is really working, you know what I mean? So it, it doesn't, and now take, when I call Sinatra the first method singer, because he was a great actor. So uh, being able to put yourself into the lyric is another thing, that, and his understanding of music, he had a brilliant mind with music in terms of, for myself, like I love classical music, I love, you know, Shostakovich or WC. The authenticity of who you are. Okay. That's the other thing that Sinatra had that these other guys mimic. They're not that, they're not the tough guy. Right. You know, Sinatra had guys that he emulated and learned from, like Bing Crosby. He learned also from Harry James and Tommy Dorsey. And he worked with the best people in the world. You know. Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, the uh, well, questions I Nelson had. Nelson Riddle, because he was able to discuss sure. his musical ideas with Nelson, Nelson Riddle and Gordon Jenkins and all these great guys. Mm -hmm. Don Costa. Right, right. Oh, wow. Um, you know, Frank Sinatra was uh, a, a huge presence when he walked on stage. Uh, the aura, everything about him was just, it was just this. I, as a kid growing up and watching him, I, I, you could feel it. You know, you just you just knew that he just had to walk into a room, walk on stage, whatever it might have been, anything I've ever seen, newspaper clippings, all that kind of stuff. Yourself, um, I know I just, we've already spoken about the mimicness and that kind of like being, not, not mimicking him, but what, for you, what's the preparation? The authenticity of who you are. Okay. That's the other thing that Sinatra had that these other guys mimic. They're not that. They're not the tough guy. Right. You know, Sinatra had guys that he emulated and learned from, like Bing Crosby. He was a big fan of Bing Crosby. Uh, Russ Colombo listened to these guys continually. Uh, he had a huge respect for Humphrey Bogart. So Sinatra built his persona, as we all do, based on a collage of brilliant talent that responds, that you respond to. So you take aspects of that uh, uh, in the etherland of 
creativity. You know, I love Bogart, I love Lee Marvin, and uh, probably a lot of the same guys, you know. You know, so not you like George Raft, you know, who's an original tough guy. So yeah. you have, and then growing up back east in New York, and uh, you know, so I don't have to mimic that bullshit. Right. I am that stuff. You know, the LA Times Magazine section came out in the early 90s, the cover of the LA Times Magazine, The Mob Goes to Hollywood. I was on the cover. Yeah. Now Sinatra had all these, you know, references to that. That's not what I. It, it's just interesting that because of a certain Italian American background and toughness, that they would make that analogy, which is all bogus. Especially, you know, Sinatra was such an artist. Sure, you meet people that are interesting, but yeah. Uh, and then the love affairs that he had with Ava Gardner and all of that. His life was way out in the front. But I don't do any. No, my preparation is my life. It's who I am. I always say that there are two singers that could look you in the eye and say, I'm going to break your legs. And that's Sinatra and myself. You know, a great Canadian singer. Michael Bublé ain't going to look you in the eyes and say that he's a great artist. But he doesn't have that edge that Sinatra had. So when you go on stage, you carry that. You know, I'm considered one of the top Bond villains of all time. GQ magazine in Britain just came out with the best Bond villains. I'm like in the top three, Goldfinger, Scaramanga, and myself. So you come onto the stage already with a certain kind of event feeling or a presence because people that see the films you're doing, that helps you, you know what I mean? As opposed to someone who is an unknown trying to mimic the greatest performer that ever lived. That doesn't have the stamp of their own personality, so you're responding to that in some way. Oh yeah, for sure. Well, the audience is You as a, an actor, uh, you play the role as a villain. And, um, you know, we're going back to Jay Fratelli and the Goonies. Uh, I saw the movie in the theater in 1985. Uh, mm -hmm. So, we're, it was really nice to actually talk to you here while you were here this summer, being here for the 30th anniversary. Do you actually keep in touch with a lot of those people from the uh, film at all? Periodically, uh, you know, if there's a chance to run into them, you know, there's always a fondness. And that's what the, most films you do, or TV things, you know. You all know each other's work in some format or some way. Uh, I remember, you know, meeting, I had met, met Renona Ryder, uh, or, you know, other kids, even, uh, what's her name, Rachel uh, McFadden. Right. We did the hot chick, and she was all, you know, Goonies was a great film of you know. So you meet these people before they, you know, Nona was very kind and very, very terrific, very delicate actress. When we did the Iceman, I had met her, but there was a, you know, so people you meet, they, they know you and they have a, and it's a mutual, you know. but, um, oh, yeah, so the threat, so, in, 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 yeah, I ran into Josh Brolin in a coffee shop years ago, you know, and it was, uh, you know, Jeff Cohen you might run into. So you run into people and there's always a come out. So uh, with uh, Niagara Falls Comic Con that was here, uh, we just went to Hamilton Comic Con and Jonathan Key Kwan was there. Um, coming back to Goonies, sorry, uh, you know on social media and all that you hear all this stuff, you see all these kinds of things, do you know what they want to do with number two? Or maybe a continuation? Who knows, they've been talking about that for a while, we'll see what happens. If they approached you, would you do it? Sure, why not? Yeah. So would it be uh, for Telly Brother in jail, and oh, we're going to get bust him out again? <laughs> you wouldn't even know. No, no, I mean, who knows how, I have my own idea how it should go. I think that what you have is, our mom passed away, so you can't have her in the family. So they probably buried her in a potter's field, and Joey and I, exhume her body because she has a remnant of the map or how to get how to find the, the pirate ship <laughs> that, that's one of the things that I that I, I, I have so you have this very interesting and that you know I, I fantasized about that opening thing and that Joey was managing me I was a lounge singer and he was <laughs> managing me and ripping me off <laughs> because of course I like the opera and the thing you know what I mean? right. so he was uh, so at least the Fratelli's who knows what they uh, what they invent if they invent 
you know, they make sequels of everything, but Goonies, they, I guess they leave it alone. What, what do you do in your downtime? Uh, well, it's a lot of, uh, I like the uh, current events. I like, you know, the sociology of what's happening in the world. Maybe too much so. <laughs> you know, I get a little obsessive with it all. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I write. I, I do some of that kind of... Uh, uh, so, that's interesting to me. You know? sure. I'm, Oh, no, that's great. Uh, one final fun question. Yeah, because I'm about to... Oh, yeah, that's fine. I'm uh, going out, baby. No, no problem. Hey, I so appreciate this time. Uh, you are you have to go to a deserted island. This is a tough one. You're only allowed to take three movies with you. <laughs> what would they be? <laughs> three movies. <laughs> I would... Uh... Casablanca. Oh, yeah, that was a sad one earlier. <laughs> I think. Uh, I assume I'm about a diesel. Oh. I had a thing to it. You know, that was very amusing in that the story. And probably. Uh, you know, I, it's difficult to say, but three. Mm. If you had just to take three films. Uh, what was that film that's 12 hours long? The Did Stand. It, is that it? Was it The Stand with Stephen King? 12 hours long? Oh, I don't know. That was, that was a long one. No, there's, no there's, there's a film that's actually like a whole big thing that's like quite a long. 12 hours long? Yeah, it's an Indian film. I think an oh. Indian film. Just know. to kill time, I, I guess. Know. Look, you know, you could say Godfather 1 and 2, you, you know, you could say all kinds of stuff. You could say, you know, Stanley Kubrick's, you know, uh, there are so many things. Those are mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um, So what do you got coming up uh, that we can look forward to in the future? Do you have any projects on the go besides, I mean, obviously, Dobby Sinatra? So There's a few things. They've done a documentary on the that yeah, sometime next year, I believe, that we've been working on for the last over a year. That should be very interesting. And um, um, I have a film, Your Move, I did with Luke Goss, that is going to be finished, and uh, a couple of other things that, that are being uh, worked on. And of course, the music traveling around. Still. When does the tour end? Well, it's on go. It's on go. Yeah, no I morph it into, you know, it, 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 this is the centennial of Sinatra, so I keep doing the American Songbook, and then I finish my next album, I'll be finishing my next album shortly, and then uh, uh, continue to singing, uh, of course, but bringing some other elements into the show, besides the songbook, some very interesting things. Oh, that's awesome. I would like to take the time to thank Robert Tommy for uh, you know, taking the time to talk to me and uh, giving me this interview. Uh, you're fantastic. Um, you know. Uh, well, thanks. Thanks for your time. And no. We finally got it together. And I'm sorry I'm so knackered. But I'm tired. Oh yeah, that's fine. I'm and tired. I, I, I get it. And yeah. uh, you know, uh, so what you can do is you can go to www.davisingsinatra.com and you can see where he is uh, coming to a town near you. Uh, I'm definitely going to be there Thursday. I cannot wait. It's going to be a fantastic show. And uh, wow, what, what can I say? I, I, I'm, I'm sitting here in, in awe. <laughs> Just sitting here in awe. And I want to thank you very much, kind thank sir. Thank you, Sean. Thank you very much. Thank and, you, buddy. Uh, thank you. Take care. Yeah, take care. Thank you, kind of. And that's a wrap. Jeez, you know what, dude? You, oh my gosh, you're just like throwing all this stuff. <laughs>